I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room. My co-host, Josh Ricardo. Edward, so, hello. Hey. Hey. Uh, we have a really special guest today. Uh, I've met this comedian a number of times, like in passing, but I've never got a chance to actually talk to her face to face. This will be the first time. But there was something about the show when we were saying to ourselves, we want someone that kind of vibes, not only female, but vibes our kind of vibe. And the first name that came to my mind was Liz Barrett. Liz Barrett has an album out called Getting By. Uh, it's super funny. I've seen some clips from it. Uh, you can follow her at Liz Comedy. She has been on Gotham TV, Laughs on Fox, Lifetime, Funny or Die, New York Post videos. I mean, she's literally been everywhere. Raw Dog Comedy on Sirius XM. She performs all over New York City. Thank you for coming into the break room. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. I'm so honored. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah, that anyone thinks of me for anything. Love it. There you go. You see, I, happy I, to be invited. That's yeah, how I feel. Exactly. I love you can it. See why I'm so far along in my self-esteem. Well, that's what I love. I'm glad you said that because that's what I really like about your vibe. Is I always I'm kind of a disgruntled person on the show. I always talk about how I started really young doing stand up, but the reasons why I started were nothing close to the reasons what I have to do now to actually succeed at it, meaning like market myself and all those things. Ugh, when I started, it was painful. Let's go do all the sets we can get. Yes. And then get really good. And then let's see if someone will take us on the road with them or see if the comedy store will pass me and then maybe I can get a late night. Like that was the only goals I really had is touring. Yes. And getting passed and getting on a late night. So it's different now. And when I think of people that have to like, I've always had to work. I've always had to hustle. Yeah. Uh, and there's something about like, your vibe when I look at your social media. Like you yeah. love Springsteen. We talked about that before we came on air. Yeah, like, you just yeah. have like a very similar vibe. Yeah. When did you start? About 12 years ago and I actually had been fired. <laughs> um, so, so unemployment led you to stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, my friends were like, you seem a little down. Maybe you should take a stand up class. I took a class. Okay. I know people are all... They don't like that, but I, I thought it was good. Yeah. You know, I met a lot of people and I didn't go into it thinking I was going to become a comedian. Sure. But then I fell in love with it. So, yeah, was I was it, fired. Was it Rick Chrome's class at the cellar? What, what class did you take? No, was at uh, Gotham, oh, cool. Andy uh -huh. Angle, that uh -huh. whole scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey yeah. Kahaney. So, oh my God, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that you, on a whim, decide to be like, life is pretty brutal. Yeah. Let's do this other, other really brutal thing. But I guess that... The endorphin, it's like jumping out of an airplane, right? Did that like shake you out of depression when you did your, your first set? Well, I was in a class with a lot of great people. I don't think any of them are doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe like one or two, but, um, and some of them had really been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. So I was like the worst in the class. And then at like week six, I was really gonna give up. And uh, then one night I stayed up all night writing jokes. Somebody told me every joke should be three lines mm -hmm. and have a punch. So that's what I did. And then I like did well. Um, and then the first class, like the graduation class, I was like, ooh, this is great. And then Corey was like, you're a natural. So I sort of like went into it that yeah. way. What? But I was going to quit. Yeah. yeah, you were done. It's Something. so easy to quit when you start old. Like when you're oh my when you God. Because I started, I was... 40 when I went to my first open mic like I yeah yeah and yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. like you know it's just all these kids I mean they're so young all these kids and it's like oh. I don't it's so funny I was thinking about it today like how <clears throat> how poorly I did at these mics but like once I got in front of a crowd I was like oh this is I felt much more loose I was so yeah. much more uptight in front of like other comics yeah yeah in the yeah beginning. like that was the hardest that was the hardest hurdle like starting older well, those I, kids, I, there's just fucking 20 year olds. I just like that's the thing with a class. I think especially if you're starting older, like a class is good because there's other people in there who are working and, you know, you don't. And again, most people don't become comedians. And it's just good to have that kind of group when you yeah, first it, it, get it. A lot of lonely in. people start this in search of other lonely people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's <laughs> my relation to the to the business. I mean, those are yeah. always the people I've connected with, right? Yeah. What job did you have that you got fired from before what you started? What job start? did I have? Oh, I was working for the state. I'm a lawyer. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, but I had a bunch of jobs before 
I went to law school late. I do everything late. So I went to law school late. <laughs> why is that? Like, I don't know. I really don't know. It's like a thing with me. Were you so. like partying with uh, bands and shit? That was no, like, And you no. got your life together? I, mean, I, it's like, I just can't get my life together. I love it. Because you seem so together. I know people think so. Yeah. And, mm, you present well. Yeah, I present, present well. You really do. I present that's well. What law, that's what you learn in law school. That's the first thing I teach you. Present yeah. Well. Yeah. And like everyone's like, oh, your house is clean. I'm like, don't touch anything. Like, yeah, you know I'm what OCD. I mean? I am too. Yeah. Like, don't touch anything because it's just like dust. But uh, oh, it's like preserved it's, in it's dust. Like, it's like yeah. a house of cards. You yeah. move one thing. And it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like sometimes you don't want the sh- sun to shine in your apartment because you're like, geez, Louise, what? is underneath that desk. I just love that it's all facade. I it's didn't know. I mean, facade. I love this. That you're, you have, you passed the bar and yeah. the New York State bar is no easy bar to pass. No, it's not. It is one of the hardest ones. And you do that. I did look, it on the first try. I mean, I, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't know that. They're, they're different. Each oh, state yeah, is like hard. California oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, New York yeah, State yeah. are brutal. Oh, are brutal. And Florida. Because they're, well, Florida is just weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has a lot of weird laws. So, and what was the plan oh, with that? Because you need to know the laws of the state. Oh, yeah. To uh, practice yes, in that yes, state. Yes, That's why yes, yes, yeah, okay. yes. And then you can take a test, um, which I should have done, but I didn't because you're tired. But like, <laughs> well, I was tired. Like uh, one test for universal. Oh. But the thing is, they reciprocity. They won't like other states will not take New York's um, bar exam because New York won't. Oh, it's a so little, I can't. It's a little, bitchy, it's a little, like little snotty. Bullshit. So then, other state like I couldn't practice anywhere else. Um, and once you're past a long time, you can never take the bar again. It's yeah. like terrible. Like one, <laughs> my husband, I was studying for the bar, and I was drinking a two liter bottle of Diet Coke, just chugging it yeah. at like ten o'clock at night, and he's <laughs> like. You have to you you got to calm yourself down because you like it, it was crazy. It's crazy studying for so the bar. You, did you put yourself through law school or was this? Well, I like, was married at the time. You were married. Okay. So we. You, well, I mean, I took out a bunch of loans. Yeah, yeah, yeah But yeah. luckily, my husband had a job, so I could that part I could deal with. But but the the tuition is still astronomical. Well, well, what, so you work your ass off to do it, and what's the? I would assume if you, the end goal is to get a gig as a lawyer. Yes, which I did do for okay. a while. Oh, so anyway, I was fired from working for the state, which is really hard to do, but I did it. Yeah, and um, everyone's like, I mean, I did it. <laughs> is it just like no showing? Uh, no, no. Oh. It was more political, oh, like okay. whatever. Um, so they came after me and I was just like, okay, fine. And the funny part was it was downtown by Wall Street. And a few years ago, before that, I had been fired at a job down by Wall Street, a law firm. So, like, literally, they For do... For the same t- reasons? Like, political. No, that was because... <laughs> We there were two women uh, associates. This yeah. one woman who was very much younger, and she was having an affair with the partner. Nice. And she didn't like me, even though I was married and I didn't care. But like, she didn't like me, so she got rid of me. Oh wow! Uh-huh. Oh, and he wow. was like a creep. Like he at one point he's like, "If you weren't married, we would be dating." And I'm like, "No, we wouldn't be." Because like, you say we would, because yeah. like, you're interested. That's I hilarious. Mean, Dude, what is this? Dudes are so uh, especially so like lawyer. That's, that's like a lawyer. Yeah. That's like next level. I mean, yeah, I was like, creep. "What?" But um, so <laughs> the you first shaking it up at the <laughs> Liz Barrett shaking it up at the law firm, man. Yeah, yeah, and so and we used to have to go to their house out i think they lived out in astoria or um what's the forest other? hills forest hills yeah, that's where all the big houses are yeah, yeah 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 and they had this dog and we used to have to go there on sundays for a meeting and it was just so the whole thing Why was so weird this? Oh. so weird i had a guy once ask us to come to some society dinner where they like a buy-in honor like a lot of these guys you realize if you're around money enough for whatever shitty job you have like i did they got money and then they started buying awards. So oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. this That's guy insane. bought in and they like celebrated him and he made us all. He couldn't say you have to come, but he did everything but not say. And it was like I had to catch a ride. I, I was uh, like 28, 29 I had to catch a ride with this fucking guy and his weird girlfriend. We're like trying to have small talk hour and a half drive to Long Island where this thing's happening on a Saturday. Oh, I gave up a whole Saturday for it. I mean, it's like, that's all weird. Like, don't get me involved with your whole relationship. Anything to do with that. What were they doing at the meeting? 
Was there any it meeting was happening? It was weird. And like she would take a shower and come down with her hair wet. And I'm like, what are you doing? And like, lawyers. I'm so not into this. Uh, yeah. Are they trying yeah. to get like some kind of freak session going, Liz? No. How, was it just you? Or no, no. You, <laughs> 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 you uh, the only me. one at this <laughs> meeting? <laughs> no, there were other like lawyer types. I lawyers. just got out of the shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You knew it's a Sunday meeting. <laughs> and then they had this dog. I think it was like a pug, which I'm, you know, pro pug, but it would like sit there like looking at me. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Usually it was all pro weird. Pl- pro pug, but I this know. place, nah. I was not. like, stop staring at me. You know, because a pug, the pug can't oh, be. The breathing. Yeah, the breathing. Yeah, the breathing. You're like, it's Sunday morning. And there are already creepy vibes in the house. People showering unexpectedly. I know. I, mean, I like, know. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, what, when you get fired, though, do you do something rash? Well, you know, it's, I don't know if you've ever had this, but like, uh, um, we've been fired a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they really come and take you away in security and put oh, you in those kind of jobs. Yeah, yeah. those yeah. types. We never discussed yeah. an never actual been, good job. I've never yeah. got walked out. Yeah. Oh, oh I have. Yeah, as a lawyer, they it is do it all. Thing. So were you allowed to like, uh, you're not allowed to touch your desk or anything like that, right? <gasps> no, I was able to get my personal effects. Um, and then I would put them in a box and be, well, because this happened twice. And the first time I came out and I was like, we Weeping, you know, I'm crying. Yeah. And this window washer was like, he had seen this before. You know, he was like, oh, lady got fired. And then <laughs> I think washer. he's like, he's like, should I help? You know, can I help you? And I was like, I don't know. And this was before Uber. So I was like a cab. So I got a cab. And I think my husband wasn't home at the, like in town. So I went to my friend's house and laid on the f- floor and like ate M&M's. <laughs> and fell asleep and then my second job that i was fired from was a little so more healthy. dramatic and then but the same thing happened i window was washer. escorted out window, sh- window washer same window washer. Same i guy. think it was the same window washer because it wasn't that long after gotcha again huh, Liz? yeah <laughs> so i don't work below like 14th elevator. street i Sorry. don't work below 14th yeah, street yes yeah, you like you have a bad rap on wall street yeah I you just might be don't. a little late like the ghost of liz barrett crying on her way to yeah. the next job that's insane it's so like if you yeah like that yeah they don't let you so like one job I had to get a lawyer and I had to get um to get the rest of my personal effects oh wow yeah, 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 yeah. wow so that's how bad it was yeah yeah that's it gets that all was technical. the government one yeah that was the yeah, government yeah, one yeah, yeah okay so yeah but uh so, I want to track down this window washer I mean I don't really. <laughs> no. I'm I fucking think Grim he Reaper. sees it all the he's time seen so much yeah. so much I, I do windows you, into the soul yeah. the real lives beyond the pain of this window son I <laughs> mean it's a whole meditation yeah. zen thing yeah, yeah right he's just like instead of like raking like the I Japanese love, guy raking the he's stones he's making eye contact like, with yeah. her yeah <laughs> one of the he worst days of her like life he like a guy who's a cab driver who's his friend he's like I got another yeah. one for you you know like everything's a, everything's a fixed thing here New York City, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone has a gimmick, man, a hook. Yeah, because well, at first you're like, yeah, I don't throw a fit, but like I just start crying. Which and is almost it, harder to deal with if you're, and most of these people, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but office yeah. people, they're very unemotional, especially the higher ups. They don't. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, yeah. they probably handle getting yelled at better than someone having a, an emotional break. Out in front of them. <laughs> I mean, it must be so uncomfortable for them. I love that you did that to them. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, you got to assume people in higher management have done things like they've shifted people to be where they are yeah, after absolutely. like twenty, twenty-five years. Like, yeah, they've yeah, done yeah. things that absolutely. like weren't great to sure. people. Yeah. So you know, I think they're tougher than that. Yeah. Like they're not. They're not going anywhere. Yeah. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're they insulate themselves. They 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 once they get to that position, they start putting pawns. And chess pieces around to like, oh, if somebody, this person, it's going to, this person's going to take the fall for yeah. any kind of like shenanigans. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's yeah. always a, they're always insulated. There's yeah. always a scapegoat. Absolutely. They never do anything without knowing exactly yeah. who's going to take the bullet for them. It's, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's very planned. Yeah. Like it's not, it's. Like everything you know. is chess around you. Yeah, you know, exactly. There's always someone that already has 20 things set up already because they've been doing it for whatever yeah. time period. And they have so many people hired to figure out what those 20 steps are and you're. Especially in a state yeah. like a government. Oh, oh because, I mean, God. They're entrenched. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's a blessing, to be honest, that that happened. Absolutely. Um, because I wasn't happy at the job. I mean, yeah. it wasn't a job for me. I was really bored. So, like... It, w- it was good but the other job I could have kept I would <laughs> I, w- I would have been okay with that but like it, you know it happens um, what, and it, so what's the 
sorry to cut you off. What's the then you get you get in stand up, you you start to pursue it professionally. I mean, obviously, I mean that's your gig now. That's who you are. It's your right. I mean, mm-hmm. you're a stand up now, mm. and no one. Obviously, I didn't know anything about this prior life. How do you, because I know for me, I only have had office jobs. That's my working class holeness. I am an office job, working class hole. So I know what it's like to have to go to a job nine to five and be in order and have to be on time and have to be on your shit or you get fired. Mm-hmm. Coming into comedy, it's always interesting how some people don't have any of those organization, like organizational attributes about them. And you seem yeah. to be a very like, yeah, it's bad. Like, I show up early for shows. Like, I do things no comedian does, which I think is good and bad for me. But, you know, overall, I'm just like, can we treat this like a professional yeah. job? And it's, not, as we all know, that's it's not, not how people do no. it. And like, it, it must have been shocking. And I think, like, I started really young, so it didn't occur to me until fairly recently when I've had to do more business. Yeah. You know, then you recognize when you're like, okay, so if I'm treating it like a business none of these things would be okay. Like I, you started older, you must have saw the same shit. You were making tons of money at the ad f- firm and you started stand-up. So you're like, so they just fucking cancel shows or cancel your spot oh, or bump you? No, that wasn't uh, surprising to me. Like the shows thing, it, to me it was like how people ran shows. I was just like, guys, you're just sitting back here talking. There's all these yeah. people sitting here. Like we're... Why is the show starting twenty minutes late? Yeah, there's, yeah. There's yeah. the room. There's twelve people in here. We can. We should start. Yeah, They've yeah. Been yeah. Sitting here for thirty minutes yeah. now, like that kind of thing. To me, I was just like, I never understood why you're not. Like, let's get. Let's. Because I know how limited my attention is. I know. You know what I mean? I think right? it's just as you as you get a little older, like you're a little more aware that like, oh, I know this about myself. Yeah. Other people probably have this thing too. Like, if something started thirty, if I went to something that started thirty minutes late, I would be fucking pissed. Oh yeah. And it's like we're not famous. Yeah, I know. What you are know. we? Like, what's I, holding them here? Like, yeah, yeah, like thirty minutes to see like Chris Rock comes. Out. Yeah, okay, whatever. Right. Cool. Yeah. Thirty minutes to like just some uh, the grizzly pear. <laughs> I know. It's like what <laughs> are you doing? Yeah. 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 I, so, you know, I don't know. I feel like for me, I always was like in awe of, oh, it's the booker. Remember like those first 10 years, like that's the booker of the club, oh, the booker, oh, that's the owner. Of the, oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. oh, nice to meet you, sir. Mm-hmm. And then in reality, you're like, wow, you meet some of the people in the power positions and you're going, I, I've worked around guys that have like two million in the bank right now, you know, in office yeah, jobs. Yeah. And they would never let any of this happen in their business. Like how are, like I'm looking, I'm trying to be a part of this world and I'm giving a lot of credit to it and I'm thinking maybe I'm not looking at the right shit business wise. I I mean, it's very, very, I mean, I came from a nonprofit background, so it was a little more, it was like campaigns and things. Yeah. So I was used to a little bit more, um, sporadic chaos. Chaos. you know and chaos not, not, my yeah. wife's a not, not for profit she, a yeah a little lot more chaos yeah so a lot yeah. more chaos so that part and like it's good my husband is in um he does political campaigns so he's used to weird hours and things like that oh so it works so that was okay but the rest of it you're like half these people are kind of like drifters yeah uh, you yeah. know well it's really a homeless are. like you could be homeless and say you're a comic i remember in la i used to go wait in line in the first couple of years i would go to la and wait in line at the Laugh Factory. They had that Laugh Factory at the time was they were the what the comedy story is now basically in that yeah, little era yeah. of time. Mm-hmm. And they made you wait. This was kind of fucked up. They made you wait out front from 2 p.m. to like five to sign up for the open mic. Wow. And you because they only took the first like oh 30 God. people or something God. because Jamie Masada would watch the open mic, who was oh. so you would get. You know, you're three minutes in front of the owner, and sometimes he would pull guys from it, and, or whatever, pull people from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember being in line, you know, and I have to take the full day off of work, my I shitty mean, gym job. I'm missing a whole day's pay because it's hourly. I drive up there, I probably spend forty dollars in gas and food, and that's like the cheap end of it. I'm not, I'm eating barely anything, and it's me, and the guys there before me are five like homeless, yeah, open micers. 
Yeah. And, and you're like, this is what I'm pursuing. Yeah. To, yeah. to earn the title comedian doesn't take much, but no, free no. time. Uh, that's what, you know what I, I mean. Like all you said. really need is like some free time. Yeah. That's it, really, yeah. to get that title. It's a, it's a very just, you could just assign it to yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had a joke like that. It's like, there's no other profession. You can just be like, this is what I am. Like, even actors, like I had an actor tell me once, he's like, you know, the thing is, I think you went to Juilliard. He's like, you know, after two years, sort of the idea is if you're not paid at all to act, sort of, that's a sign. Mm -hmm. But in comedy, it's like. It's forever. It's forever. Yeah. And and I do think people who start like kind of get a bad rep or if you have like a regular job because you're supposed to like be living in a trailer and not anything wrong with living in it. But you're yeah, supposed but to be like living in like on an air mattress. And it's like, well, no, I'm an adult. Thing, you yeah, know, right, I don't yeah. know what to say. It, like, well, it, here's OK. I'm so glad you said that because yeah. I am glad to have another. I'm going to ask you this question and then I'll, I'll answer. I have like something for you. But yeah. <laughs> uh, you must love it then like i just discovered what i loved about stand-up uh -huh. recently before it was all the wrong reasons it was like talking to girls after the show getting gratification right away yeah. and it really stunted my career for a long time and then when i figured out after i got over you know my feelings about the business it's not fair like all the dumb shit that you say woe is me kind of thing when i got through that and i realized the business part of it i started to find what i really loved about it i feel like people that start a little later find what they love about it a lot sooner oh yeah well, I, i'll say this uh if i didn't find what i loved about it i would just that's what back. i mean i would yeah, just because it doesn't quit. make sense when i was yeah, 21 like i had like a job that i hated but I was like making a decent living with it. You know what I yeah. mean? It's the first time in my life I was like making money. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, I yeah. was just, and I'm like leaving that to do comedy. If I'm not finding something that I love about it, like immediately, I'll just go back to being miserable at the job that pays. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. how you felt too? Like you knew when yeah. you didn't like something, you were going to be out. It sounds like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't really find what I like. I yeah. <laughs> like, I guess this is, but I always say too, like, I know I'm not being articulate at all, but if I was 27, I would never have lasted in comedy. I would have given up. I know me. Like, first off, I don't think I would have that interesting a thing, anything to say. And like, second, I just would have caved after. A while. I mean, you know, I think, you know, in some ways being married too is like good and bad yeah. in, in stand up. Like in some ways, if you have a supportive spouse, it really is very helpful. Oh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Sorry, I went a different way there. Yeah. But no, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. I agree. I it was is. like yeah. supportive spouse. That sounds uh, no. I <laughs> 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 one of those. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I like to. I know this sounds stupid, but you know, and it's not very popular anywhere. I feel like it's like I like to write a joke and have people laugh at it. Like I don't know. It's very simple no, it for me. That's what it's supposed to be, that's though. The, I know, I, but the, it's not. It, with the zen, but that's, but the, that's the zen. Yeah, that's the it. balance yeah. of it, right? because. You know, and this is circling back to where I pivoted to the other question yeah. is, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, what's the word I'm looking for here? Ah, whatever. I, I just feel like people don't understand that the reality of it all is no one. If people are making money off your dream and you're not really getting much out of the dream. Yeah. As a stand up. And I'm not blaming anyone. Everyone is complicit in this formula the mm -hmm. club's complicit the industry's complicit me by being a part of it is complicit i think once you're understanding that the end game for me it's not the money it's the love part mm. because that was really hard to swallow when i realized that unless x y and z happens for me i'm never gonna make the kind of money that someone who produced that show would make yeah. or who wrote that show would make or who got the producer credit because he managed the guy who got that show would make. And you're seeing all these people kind of feed off of, I mean, in the comedy store days, there were days where they could get away with getting some comics to fix a wall because yeah. he had it's construction experience. And it was like, well, and I'll give you five extra minutes. And you know what? No harm, no foul. If that's what that guy's willing to do to get time, amazing. But it's, you know, that when you figure all that out, you're not mad about it anymore. And I, I would say, though, you get that perspective from working on office jobs. Like, I worked in a lot yeah. of restaurants, and it's yeah. a lot of, like, team, you know what I mean? As much as it is, like, however much tips I can get, if somebody's not like, yo, yo, help me fucking run these potato skins, 
yeah. over there. Like all that kind of like shit like where you're helping each other out. Like that is um, like it's like team sports a little bit. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, that's interesting. I, so. I, look at, I, I look at like team sports. And then when I went into advertising, I got a job as an editor in advertising. And then I see all the little jobs that matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That people are doing. The guy that's holding the fucking boom mic. Like I'm like, if he fucks up. It's a problem for me. You know what I mean? So, so all those little things, I don't mind other people make. I like when everybody gets paid. Well, oh, that's you know different, I mean? yeah. though. That That's not really, I think, in the beginnings. You, I want you to answer that, yeah. though. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, sorry, I, I think it is a giant Ponzi scheme. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It's like my husband and I joke about it all the time. I mean, you have to put so... That's the other thing. You really do have to put so much money into it. I don't think people realize. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a long time. I mean, I'm just getting to the point where, like... I'm hired for gigs and I don't really I don't really do open mics and and that sort of thing like you know at this point I don't I'm not in the hole yeah like when I go out at for the now. for context for the audience yeah. what Liz is saying you correct me if I'm yeah, wrong yeah. is like she is finally in a position where she's getting enough spots at clubs that respect her enough to where mm-hmm. open mics are no longer necessary yeah. to work out material as, is that kind of like yeah so I, I don't think people always understand that they don't where understand. you cannot like I'm not getting booked enough at some of the bigger clubs I can't go in there and do a new bit if I get booked I gotta no, go in and kill yeah. right. but as you get more established there and more well known and if they put you on the flyer and you're gonna sell 10 to 20 tickets for them you could probably go in there and do a whole lot and, and not get in much trouble yeah. kind of thing. So for the audience, that's like when you're saying, I'm finally at a place to do that, that is fucking huge. Yeah. Right? And I mean, I think too, like people don't understand, uh, I don't know, I'm zoning now. I just totally zoned out. Yeah, I did I one of those. Saying. I just zoned Recently out. I did one of those when I was talking to you guys and I found it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. <laughs> This is where I'm old. I'm like, oof, that thought could be gone for a very long time. A very Let me ask you long this. time. Have you, so, so you started comedy uh, 12 years ago. About, yeah. And then um, when did you, like, no, I'm not going back to, like, regular jobs? Uh, like, how long ago is that? The thing now? is, comedy is tricky, too, because you get, like, Every year I was sort of like, if I don't see a progression of imp- like improving with gigs mm-hmm. and whatever, then I will quit. And of course the pandemic happened, which really did slow. And I was, yeah. I was sick. I had a couple operations and stuff. So 2020, I, like I felt like I was just getting on sort of a roll in mm-hmm. 2020 and then kind of whatever. Yeah. So now I feel this year, that's why I did the album to like, you know, ramp it back up. So I feel like I'm making some progress but that's the tricky thing with comedy it's like such a fickle mistress really yeah and and that's that's what was my point i was going to make about you saying you know you like the collaborative effort about being a waiter i think that really existed for me and a lot of folks when they start stand up in the first 10 years because everyone is like i started open mics with this guy Uh and we built this little monthly and then you know we were hitting the payment we're meeting at the diner afterward i mean that to me, yeah. was the greatest part of my stand-up life were those first 10 years where everything was a possibility. There was no, yeah. I didn't know anything, so nothing was off the table. And then when I started to tour and I had to make money, there was like a year where I was like, all right, I'm going to use these road gigs and see if I could pay my rent. Yeah. And you started to see the way people did business. And you're like, oh, this is an industry where we're all whores. Yeah. 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 Because I remember guys that would talk the most shit about loyalty would take a gig from you. You know, I found out a guy emailed a guy about a weekend I was doing and said something that I'd sent to him private. Like there was always something where you're like, oh, this is kind of a sketchy industry because you don't need like a buy in fee. You don't need to pass any tests like you were saying. You just are. So that's why I always approach comedy now like a fucking what could that person take from me? It's probably not the greatest. Well, it sounds what? like uh, it sounds like Liz's uh, boss's uh, uh, ex girl or girlfriend. Same thing. <laughs> yeah, right? same Talk thing. It was that shit. bitch <laughs> talking shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, and the insurance. Like called at that the insurance- fucker Altoona and told her about. It. <laughs> yeah, that my like, and even at the insurance department, like uh, the woman didn't like me. My immediate supervisor. So it was all like. So it's women the just same don't like soon. you. Yeah, women don't like me. Mm -mm. (laughs) But I was gonna say too, like, um, you like, you get to the. It gets very lonely as you get further along in comedy. 
like I miss a lot of people and they, you know, people mm-hmm. leave and then the pandemic happened and whatever. And as the more you, I guess, get successful, I don't even know. Well, like, I it mean, is when you lonelier. got, because you work a lot of the great clubs in the city. You, I, uh, well, you, I try. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I see your stuff on yeah, social yeah. media. I'm sure other comics that came up with you that aren't working those clubs. Yeah. Probably a little jealous. I mean, but the thing is, too, like people don't realize there's no guarantee. Like there's a new booker at a club. You right. have oh, no. It's, then it's over. But see, it's the, over. But that's part of the allure of stand up. And that's where they're feeding off of is the fanatical end of the comedian. This blind passion. Yeah. And love you're giving to this job. And I remember I gave it to all the job. But in reality, I should have just been giving it to the stage part and the writing part. Yeah. And the interaction with a group of individuals that. I was able to win over. Right, that's that's the and don't forget your Instagram account. <laughs> I, see, that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, right, exactly. How could I forget? But it was like to, the other day, even though I didn't have a gig on a Saturday, and someone texted me like on a Thursday and was like, "Do you want this?" And of course, I just was like, "Sure." Yeah. And without even asking any details, yeah. which of course it was more complicated right, than I, whatever. I did one of those. And <laughs> my, I was cracking. I was driving the the two of us went a friend of mine and we're both like we have to like there's going to be a support group for comedians where we say okay like how much have to make a year to not say yes the first two seconds i see the fucking note, yeah say what are the details where is it what is going to happen it doesn't mean you're going to say no but it just means like why do you have to but that's a comedian that my husband laughs at me can you imagine if comedians all of a sudden just the fact that you did stand up made you as hot as say a like an only fans model yeah, and we're just saying yes to everything coming. You would be raped a ton. Like I, <laughs> I say this. <laughs> I, some I mean, people I like know rape. that are models, like do like nude modeling. They never say yes. Yeah, yes. until they you got to fill out a fifty-page yeah. form before right. some of my and friends it's say smart. yes. Yeah, and you have to do it's that. Smart. Yeah. But we well, are just so happy. Yeah. Like, I'll come to your house. Like, I, you know how you know, show, shows like that in people's houses? Yeah, I'll do the house show. Like, I'm just going to this fucking stranger's house. Well, that's With the all thing. of his guns there and all the like, stuff. I had a terrible gig. I mean, this is getting into stand-up, but anyway. No, you, yeah, it needs to be. We love terrible gig stories. <laughs> okay. Please tell a terrible gig story. So I was hired. Some woman had seen me, and she hired me to be, do a fundraiser for um, maybe the Jersey, the Hoboken Mayor, or something like that. <laughs> And uh, the Hoboken Mayor. A Hoboken Mayor. And I get picked up at the train station, and they take me to basically it's underneath the train tracks, and it's like a tile store, um, bathroom <laughs> tile and kitchen tile, and which they've Boss, transformed. This is Liz Barrett, the comedian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. She, she said she will not kiss the ring. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I was very. So <laughs> it was me and this other comedian who. I was like, if he does well, I'm going to kill myself. And of course, he did terrible too. But uh, but not as terrible as I did. They like It was all these like Italian guys yeah. and the mayor sat like where right. you're sitting, staring at me the whole time. Like that pug. And yeah, like that pug. <laughs> and um, there were a couple women in the back who were like, oh, we love you. But they couldn't say it too loud. You know what I mean? And um, it was awful. Because your just stuff is awful. like about womanhood, uh, yeah. and it's really dry yeah. and witty and fun. Like it's not a hey, who's hey, who oh. got the fucking hey, who was a gabagool. Like it's yeah. not a it they want terrible. that. They really want I'm that. Still well, trying it, to figure out. Wait a second. So the mayor of Hoboken is on the stage. You like his comic like view? Is he in a tile store? Yeah, this is where and they had cleared <laughs> Are they it like out. Sitting on folding chairs. Like? Yeah, they're sitting in folding chairs and they're eating a lot Sounds of like Italian food. Yeah. <laughs> And it was really good Italian food, but anyway. Um, and then the guy who hosted was like, thought he was like a comedian. Which oh, is it's the like worst. somebody's buddy. Yeah. Let's all, let my buddy host. Yeah. yeah, and I and I had to do like half an hour, oh. I think, or forty minutes or something, and it was terrible. And there's like pictures. There's like a picture of them just staring at me. These like Italian guys, and you know. Middle-aged Italian guys are not really my demographic. They're, they don't want to hear from me. They're away from I'm the I'm a lady. middle-aged Italian guy. I think you're lovely. Yeah, I'm, I know. <laughs> in a tile a little store. Older, it's a little older. A little older. I, do, I, you're a little I, I am in a lot of pockets. I do yeah. a lot of circles. <laughs> so, um, and then at the end, like, I just wanted to get out of there. And, like, I go, and I'm, 
I mean, it was really a place you could dump a body. Yeah. And I'm just like calling the Uber like. No offense, quick. Italians. No offense. You know, no offense. <laughs> no offense. No, you know, there's no correlation. But it was one of the worst. One of the worst. <laughs> Gino's like, painting tiles. Too. I, hey, we got comedy on Saturdays. Like often. Don't I'll, forget, bring your ma too. All right. We got two. I got a female. Uh, I got. I got another guy too. Yeah, jo- Johnny's gonna host. Johnny Torelli. <laughs> yeah, the corner guy. Just the guy who's always running his mouth on the corner. Yes. Give yep. him a mic. Yep. Yeah. I played a gig where it was deep Brooklyn, hardcore hookah lounge, black audience. Mm-hmm. Probably about 40 people. Yeah. They're making like barbecue in the back. They're doing all the stuff. Everything is on uh, no like, I don't think they have a license to do a lot of what oh, they're sure. doing. But yeah, it's yeah. a great, like yeah. it's known as the party spot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know this. I just say yes, this gig. The money yeah. was right. Yeah. Show up to the gig. Uh, Kenny Warren's there. So I'm oh, like, oh, cool. Kenny. I guess I know one person here, yeah. right? Yeah. Kenny doesn't... Uh, the guy goes, hey, I got no batteries for this uh, cordless mic. Oh, that's always a good start. When the show's starting. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, we need batteries because we got to start now. So Kenny wants to just get it over with. So he's like, I'll go. No spotlight. He's using his oh. phone. I run to get batteries. We put batteries in the cordless because I have to do 50 minutes. Kenny's what? only doing 15, yeah. 20, and he's right. bouncing. Yeah. I hope he was going to stick around. He gets me up there. He fucking bails. It's just me <laughs> with my iPhone light trying to angle it at my face in front of this tabletop. <laughs> oh, my God. It was oh, insane. Crazy. So Gosh. get this. I kill. I get a standing <laughs> ovation. The guy, I get off. The guy goes, I got two. He brings out a fat roll of money. He goes, I got $200 if you do 30 more minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, this is how I... 10 years ago, I go, bet. Me now, I'm like, nah, I got to get out of here. Because I knew that next 20, uh, was I was going to get murdered. I was going to yeah. get eaten alive. Yeah. yeah. And the only reason why it went well is because I was not, I just ran with the fact that it was dark and just talked a ton of shit. Like, I just really just tried to act yeah. like I. If you milked that anymore. Oh, you know, oh yeah. it was over. They it were going to. Yeah. You would have been just. And it was so oh, hard because he had the cash oh, in my face. And as a so comedian, hard. when you see cash, I don't yeah. have to report this. I could just take yeah. this home with me. Ugh. Nothing better than a gig that pays cash. Am I right? Oh, then, yes. Love. Oh. Yes. And now it ruins Venmo. And I'm like, eh. Um, I know. I don't want to report this shit. I, I, I'll re- I report everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I once had, I did say no to a gig where this woman and her daughter had seen me and they loved me. And they were like, oh, you know, my husband's turning like 65 and it was going to be out like on Staten Island. And we, we want to get a comedian. And I said, I said, your husband is really not going to like me. Yeah, I said, you yeah, need a certain type of comedian and then he'll have such a better time. And like, I forget who I got like for them. But I was just like, no, I'm not going to put myself through this see, because that's awareness. Right. Yeah. There. I was yeah. like, no, so and see, it, I would have taken that gig, yeah. but it was like I would have had to drive to Staten Island. It was also, I think, the like marathon like it would have taken me all and i'm like this man isn't gonna enjoy my well, comedy but that's and age that's fine. and wisdom right yeah. like i now know that it's not worth it one because of the inconvenience it would cost me to get there yes and then to know that i might bomb is just a, that seals the deal me at 25 doing comedy me at 30 doing comedy two hour drive pays 40 bucks yeah i'll be there yeah, yeah i'll be in the car tomorrow I, I'm, I'm ready to go yeah it's and insane this year is the first time i'm sort of like okay i have to be more yeah yeah i mean well it's yeah. funny too i learned this standing out front because i i started barking out front of the pair that's how yeah. like i got started and uh i learned pretty i don't know maybe like a year into doing that that like Oh, not everybody likes that. People, everybody thinks they like stand up comedy. Yeah. Oh, they don't. There's a lot of people There's who don't. There's a lot of people that don't. They yeah. just they think, think it's. They think they do. They're like, oh, I like funny movies. Sure. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no stand up comedy's not for you. No. Like, just the, you watch the people and you. You see them go in, and then you see them leaving halfway That's through the, the show. <laughs> Especially if this show is like a not a great show. I mean, too. even if this woman had said this was our anniversary party, I would have said maybe okay. Uh-huh. But like the fact that it was for her, his birth, I'm like, no, he's not going to enjoy me. It's fine. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, 65 year old men looking at me, like they're like, I don't want to hear, but I don't really care. <laughs> don't like, like, and it's fine. <laughs> it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I don't know. But so anyway, yeah. So I'm a lawyer, and. Um, I'm like bringing it back to I don't know what, what well, do you I want, want to, to talk, talk about, about this. Yeah, when did you? Okay, so yeah. getting by is the album, and 
it's coming out. It's already out, but it came out through out. Pinch Records, correct? Yeah, through Which Pinch Records. Which is Record. New York Comedy Club's label, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. So the reason why I'm mentioning those details is because that's a very cool thing to have, not just 12 years in, but just your story alone. That's a yeah. pretty cool thing. Yeah. That means that you've discovered your voice very quickly. And I don't know if that's solely because of the time and knowing yourself so well when you got started, but how did you figure out what your voice was to get it to a point where you're approached? I mean, they've put out some great stuff already. You know, some pretty good na- big names have been out with their albums through Pitch. Yeah. So when you get with them, that that's kind of like a signature thing. They're not just going to give anybody yeah. press like that. So how did you f- navigate that? Just I want to know about the album a little bit and how you got to it and how you found your voice and all that stuff. Well, last year was a slow year, so I was like, you know, I need to do something. Mm -hmm. So I thought an album, because actually I pulled a lot of old jokes I don't even tell anymore. Yeah. So I never even, but I always was like, well, who are these people putting out? But it's like a marketing tool, basically. Yeah. Um, But... So I did a lot, but I did a lot of stuff I do now and now, you know, that's the big thing now. Like I can't do that material. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I just wanted an album that was just like, I talk about hummus, like nothing cutting edge. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. it's on a a good label, which is great because some people, I've met a lot of people that have about 12 albums that they've independently put out. Like that's not what I'm talking about. It's not like I manage to record something and just throw it out into the universe like it's a professional product you know that you're putting out so that's a pretty big deal well that's another thing like comedians are always like well you should know how to edit the-. and it's like i don't know how to do that like i'd rather have my like part-time job now that would pay for that yeah then learn how to do it like that's not a skill set I have. Yeah. I'm not a technical person. So I knew they would do it professionally. And, you know, I, I was like, well, do what you do because I mm-hmm. don't know how to do that stuff. Yeah. I yeah. was saying this the other day. I don't know it, what would be a bigger, like, comedy threshold for me The Tonight Show or being able to pay somebody to cut my clips. You know what I mean? Like, right? <laughs> right? It's very like, painful. Like, I mean, but... I think the latter is <laughs> yeah. to, to afford help. And I mean, you could get a lot done in the comedy game right now if you could afford someone to cut all those clips oh, and be on a schedule for six months. Imagine oh. what you would see from that. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, that's what I'm trying to get to because, you know, anymore if I'm not booked somewhere, I don't. I try not to freak out, and then I just like do videos, which I'm like, all right, I yeah. guess. But that's what you have to be doing. But I know? like what you said in the top of the show where you were like, well, I don't think at 27 I would have stayed in comedy. I don't think I would because have I do comedy. think there's something to be said for it working now for you. It's yeah. just like you have, it's a rare, you're a rarity, right? I'm, I'm sure people go like, I'm a oh. unicorn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, that's a, that's probably why they kept inviting you to those meetings. Yeah. 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 Cause you're a unicorn. <laughs> I'm always curious about uni- people into unicorns. I don't get the unicorn. Like, well, the actual thing, thing or you're talking about the sex kink part of it. Wait, there's a. Se- I didn't oh. even know about the <laughs> yeah, sex. I yeah, so a, uh, I, I just well, a unicorn is a a woman or a man, depending upon what you're, Whoa. you know, looking for as a couple, mm-hmm. that is willing to just guest star right away in a threesome with you and your partner. Oh. Wow, so I did typically not it's know referring that. to females though. Huh. But I don't know. I, I think oh, okay. it applies for men if they're coming into your relationship as well. Why not? I feel like there's a big unicorn culture, not just that. No, no, but it, like, it, it meshes over. Yes. Yeah, like uh, a yeah. lot of people yeah. are into unicorns, which so I don't really get. A lot of EDM, like electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would always, think, electric- like yeah, yeah, yeah. I would always your- think it was like a pegging thing, like a, uh, yeah, like, right, like with a. The horn. I mean, this I is know. one of those things. I'm like, I don't think I ever needed to know this about is the it. Best. <laughs> yeah. The fact I, I have all the knowledge I have. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> we're three <laughs> middle-aged white people looking for wh- who else is into Peggy. I don't know. I, yeah. I uh, know that the part I said was right. That's okay. it. Everything else, I don't know anything about. Anything but, else? <laughs> but it, well, for a long time, I did my. Well, I was very. I was a lot more deadpan, and like some some comedians would be like, I. I don't get what you're doing and I'm like okay well it's fine and but I knew that to be I'd be different yes that was part of the yes and that's what I mean too not just your delivery yeah but like you said it's so so many because now a lot of gigs well I wish we had a fucking bell I'm saying it again get lost to like social media influencers right yeah see a lot of the lineups are very young and talking about a lot of stuff that's like even for me at 42 I'm starting to get phased out of age-wise just because yeah. there's so many new things that 
are trending. I mean, I didn't know about unicorns. Well, yeah, they, and I helped you out. See, that's what I helped did. You out. <laughs> I'm helping. Yeah. I but mean, the you're, if you're on the bill, and it's like four TikTok influencers, and you, that's you're unique. That's like a yes, I am. That's amazing. And like young people do get me. Like I'm often, you know, I thought, oh, you know, 20 year olds won't get me, and they do. They think I'm just like weird. Yeah. So that's fine. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, that's great. It works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it works. Weird is fun. So, I love it. Yeah, but, yeah. But so, yeah, I've had a checkered past. I worked in nonprofits right out of college where I made no money, mm-hmm. like it made comedy look lucrative. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right. so I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm pivoting to like old jobs. Do you want me to talk about that? No, yeah. you're good. Sure. Yeah, Everything's yeah. been great. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You can talk about anything. You know, what was your first job? What was your first job? That's a good one. Well, out of co- I mean, I worked at Captain D's, which is Ooh. the. Do you know Captain, What's Captain D's? No, but it sounds good. What's yeah. Captain D's? It's the poor man's Long John Silver. I was about to say fish and chips. I should have did a guess with you. In the South. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Is that where you're from? I went to. My dad's in the military, and I went to uh, high school in Virginia. Oh, okay. So uh, I worked there for like a month and a half, and that was the time the guy who was on his third wife, who was the manager and the chef, was like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was like. Well, you have to call him Chef Robbie. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey I'm the chef over with Captain D. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And they, he was like eyeing me for his fourth wife, and I'm like, no, it's not gonna happen. I mean, like I was you 17. must be a panther out there in these job places. These men oh, cannot brr. get enough. Of you. Yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, you've been breaking up homes yes. since Captain D's day. Since I was 17. <laughs> I know my husband's so lucky. <laughs> Liz, plug where you're at. Tell everyone where they can find you and what's coming up next for you. Uh, what do I plug? Okay, so I'm on all the the apps at Liz Comedy. At Liz Very Comedy. easy to remember, so support that. I love when people are like, I love your video, but I don't want to share it or like it. I'm like, well, well that is useless. useless to me. Isn't useless that the to me. You get a text, hey, that new uh, clip is hilarious. And I'm like, dude, well, you didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Don't, yeah. It just press the like button. Press you know, the I'm like dying button. here. You know, that's yeah. what I want to tell them. Like, I'm dying here. Yeah. <laughs> You fucking I'm busting my fucking hump like, for these videos. Yeah, why are you sending a text to me? <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to start screenshotting with your phone number publicly. Like, call this guy. He loves my shit. In the comment. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to put your, your screenshot in the comment of my fucking clip. I'm like, share it. Why don't you? So, and then I have an album, Getting By, uh, and that's on uh, iTunes and I guess Spotify. Yeah. They can hear it all over there. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it's only half an hour. Oh, really? So it's really so it's tight. Yeah, it's a tight thirty. You're just pop, pop, pop. Yeah, bah. yeah. So you can just listen to it and you're done. Love it. Yeah. Uh, at Josh Ricardo, joshricardo.com. Go at Eddie. And uh, you can follow me uh, at Ed McGowan Comedy. You can look me up on edmcgowan.com. We have an email address. Yeah, email us, please. Ooh. Let's get some emails going. If you got a shitty job, if you got problems at work, <laughs> tell us about your shitty job. Email us, and we will read not it on fix air. It. We we'll will read, read it, it on air. Yeah. We will talk about it on we air. We will laugh at you. No, I, <laughs> we will. I will give you some sound advice. No, maybe not Ed. <laughs> he wants to start a team of people to help him score all kinds of different yeah, drugs yeah, and his substance team, yeah, abuse I'm days. T- <laughs> you I'm can a, quit a too. Team. Always remember quitting is an option. Yeah, that's yeah. what if I always our say. Our friend Liz has taught us is that you can always quit and level up. Yes, <laughs> always quit. That's my philosophy. <laughs> WorkingClassComedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at WorkingClassHoles. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in WorkingClassHoles. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 